Hello and welcome to another tear inducing episode of Techspert Weekly and big apologies again for my absence last week but the good news is that because of that break I've now had a full fortnight with which to come up with a proper intro for the show and I know what you're thinking he probably spent most of that fortnight indulging in his favourite hobby of sinking pints until he passes out face first on the floor in a pool of his own dribble and other bodily fluids potentially and that would be 100% accurate but in one of my pass out drunk sessions I did actually apparently script an intro which which I then found stuffed in my jeans the following morning. So as you can see there, it says Textbook Weekly Intro, do not open until the shoot. So, ooh, big surprise. Wonder what delights lurk within. And here we go, fingers crossed, it's a good one. Uh, oh, uh, all it says is knob juice. And um, it looks like there's a cute little picture of, is that like a badger mounting a goat or something? Yeah, not really, not really sure on that one. Um, but yeah, there you go. Knob juice. Techspert weekly. So anyway, moving swiftly onwards, there's lots of tech news for me to bang on about because of course two full weeks of action during which there were several launches and other bits. So let's crack that whip. <coughs> oh God. I was perhaps a bit too enthusiastic with the old whip cracking. Now one of the first big launches last week happened on Tuesday when HMD spaffed out a couple of new Nokia branded smartphones and even a feature phone to boot. But the main event was definitely the XR20, a phone that is so tough it could beat up your DAR blindfolded. It's enjoyed some rigorous military standard rough handling, just like your mum, and it could be anyone's for just 400 quid, about 40 times more than your mum. With the added bonus that HMD Global will plant 50 trees for every phone sold which would just about cover the huge wad of manuals and leaflets that come boxed with it. My full unboxing of the XR20 is live right now, complete with this sexy bit of drop test action. Just look at that stance. That, that is a power stance right there. As for the feature phone, well that's a rebooted version of the 6310 that launched way back in 2002, when the world was significantly less plaguey and my liver was only semi f- one of the standout features of the original was its Bluetooth support, and it also came with a tasty bit of Snake 2 action, thus giving my teenage hands something to do besides the usual frantic self-abuse. Next up, Poco spaffed out the Great Value X3 GT, an alternative to the Poco X3 Pro, this time powered by a MediaTek Dimensity 1100 chipset rather than a Snapdragon platform. It feels like a more mature phone, especially as the obligatory branding doesn't stretch right across the entire arse. And if you want to know more, my Poco X3 GT unboxing and X3 Pro comparisons are live right now. Hip hip hooray, celebratory sour shots at the ready. And in fact, by the time this video goes live, my full Poco X3 GT review should also touch wood be live as well. So yay, more shenanigans, fun times, that's the weekend sorted. And of course, before you even ask, did you even have to ask? Yes, Motorola did launch some new smartphones last week as well, this time a tissy trio of flagship devices. If the fresh new Motorola Edge family was cheeky 1980s pop sensation The Police, well, the sting of the bunch would definitely be the Moto Edge 20 Pro. This £649 smartphone is hitting blighty in the coming weeks via Auto, Voda, Carphone and others, and that premium price gets you a 108 megapixel camera with 9-in-1 ultra pixel shenanigans for bright results in pretty crap light, plus you get 8K video recording smarts too. And you've also got Motorola's first periscope style telephoto lens with 50 times combo zoom. Ooh, fancy. And the rest of the specs sound pretty tidy as well. So you've also got a bright and punchy 6.7 inch 144Hz OLED display. Although sadly the Moto Edge 20 Pro is only powered by the Snapdragon 870 chipset and not that bitty big bollocks Snapdragon 888. And if you don't know much about the Snapdragon 800 series chipset as well, think of the Snapdragon 870 as say for instance a uh, Greg sausage roll, whereas the Snapdragon 888 is a hot bit of steak bake action fresh out of the oven. You know, sausage roll, perfectly good, very satisfying indeed. Uh, you know, you've got one uh, in the Poco F3, for instance, not sausage roll, the Snapdragon 870, and that can do gaming and all that kind of shenanigans absolutely fine. But at this sort of price point, I was definitely hoping for a bit of beef. You know, maybe let's just stop the whole meat analogy thing, because it's probably just more confusing than anything, and also I'm really, really stunned to salivate. For less cash, you can grab the regular and skinnier Moto Edge 20, which once again rocks a 108 megapixel primary camera, but this time the telephoto shooter maxes out a 30 times combo zoom. You've got another 6.7 inch 144Hz AMOLED screen and the performance this time comes courtesy of a Snapdragon 778G chipset. 
And the Moto Edge 20 will set you back 429 quid. And if that's still just a little bit out of your sort of budget range, well, there's always the Moto Edge 20 Lite, which comes in at 299 quid. This one's powered by a MediaTek Dimensity 720 instead, with the same sized OLED display, this time topping off at 90 hertz. It's good to see that 108 megapixel camera back in action, although this time there's no telephoto shooter. But you do get the Moto family's biggest battery at 5000 milliamp and a headphone jack which is missing from the posher expensive efforts. And it looks like the tagline for these new Motorola smartphones is Find Your Edge, which, uh, I mean, it's a bit boring and generic, to be fair. You know, I'd have probably gone with, uh, like, Toss Yourself Over The Edge, um, or maybe, I don't know, Edge, buy one or you're a massive c***. Actually, those are... That's pretty sh** as well, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, lots of other stuff happened last week as well. So for instance, the Huawei P50 series also launched out in China, uh, but that was a China-only launch. There's no sign of it appearing in Western uh, markets anytime soon, hopefully at some point. Uh, but yeah, I've still got this week to cover, so uh, let's get a shift on. And the big news this week was Google finally announcing the existence of the new Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro, which should be properly launching this autumn. We've already seen that snazzy new design with both Google flagships rocking an aluminium frame and a wide boy camera bar thanks to the enlarged sensors. The 6.4 inch Pixel 6 is sadly no longer as compact as past models, while the Pro is a proper 6.7 inch monster, boasting the first zoom lens of the series. And yes, apparently both of these new phones will be powered by the all new and fresh 5 nanometer Google Tensor chipset, which are custom designed by Google to enhance the camera experience while also adding in new features. Plus, you've also got a dedicated security core to keep your privates well private. And yes, while the Tensor chip is apparently designed by Google, it is also being manufactured by Samsung. Uh, so let's just pray to Jesus, Butter, Beelzebub, whichever deity you happen to have a hard on for, that the Tensor doesn't turn out to be a bit of a damp squib just like the Exynos chipsets. So yeah, lots of new phones uh, on the horizon or coming later in 2021 to look forward to. Uh, so if you like phones, then good times ahead. Definitely maybe don't go stringing up that noose just yet. Uh, but anyway, that's the big headlines covered and I am proper running out of time now. So regrettably, it is time for the part of the show that would club baby seals to death if only it had the hands with which to wield a metal pull. It's viewer comments. Woo! Viewer comments. <laughs> As so first of all, lots of you lovely folk wishing me a hearty congratulations on reaching 600,000 subscribers here on Techspert. Absolutely bat bonkers mental, frankly. Not really sure what's going on there, but I definitely celebrated hard by drinking all of the whiskey uh, in my time off. Uh, but let's get things kicked off properly with Jason, who says, No Techspert Weekly last week. What's the matter? Don't you like us anymore? Uh, come on, Jason. Buddy, you know my heart is overflown with nothing but love and respect for all of you crazy morphos who've got the time and patience to watch this nonsensical arse flapping wrapped up as some sort of legit tech news show every single frickin' week. And next up, AD says, after a fortnight we get one your mum joke. What's that all about? Um, I mean, frankly, you know, we're 73 episodes in on Techspert Weekly now. I was already running out of material by episode three. But all the same, I promise I'll try my best to satisfy just like your mum, in fact. Uh, Jason McCormick says, something tells me Chris was having a bad day when he filmed this. Um, I mean, Jesus, I honestly can't even remember a bit two weeks ago. I can't even remember what happened two hours ago. Uh, Mike says, just skip the tech and keep doing the comedy. Uh, I mean, many would say that I'd skip both of those in favour of just talking bullshit a uh, camera for 20 minutes. Uh, Dan says, hey, I genuinely meant what I said. I've been enjoying your tech review since the Rakumbu days. Oh, cheers, bud. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's been a good few years now. I think it was about three years ago I left Rakumbu. Um, so yeah, so that's time flies, man. Although I tell you what, just the other day I stumbled across a video that I'd uploaded uh, during my mobile choice days onto the YouTubes and that was proper cringe. It was all like, this is the HTC Mozart. It's got two megabytes of RAM and a three megapixel camera. Clearly the days before I used to loosen up for a video by down and half a bottle of scotch. Uh, next up, no idea how to pronounce this, so apologies. Uh, Fia P uh, says, the launch film with the shot to the head was the reason I immediately pre-ordered the Nord 2 and I'm a middle-aged gray head single mum Beat that, you youngins. Good on you. There you go. Who says that extreme violence doesn't sell smartphones? Uh, on the very same subject of that Nord 2 uh, bonkers launch video, uh, Hell on Earth, very apt username, uh, says, Wow, unless that phone is bullet and shockproof, that is a crazy launch video. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess that would have kind of at least made sense if he'd managed to, like, deflect the bullet uh, using his OnePlus Nord handset or something, although I'm not quite sure Gorilla Glass Victors is up to that sort of trauma. Uh, here we go. Uh, Etienne is back again with a follow-up on that 9i injections story uh, that we never knew we needed. He says, I have a er eritis? Ir eritis? Um, so they need to deposit a reservoir of steroids into my eyeball now and again. They actually inject steroids direct into your eye. Now all I've got is just this image of two really beefcake eyeballs like bursting out of your skull. Uh, next up SJSTU says, hey Dr. Spurt, sounds slightly less pervy than Uncle Spurt. Dr. Spurt, I'm, I'm not sure that does sound less dodgy actually, it just sounds like I'm a pervert with credentials. Um, anyway, he continues, uh, I've been watching some retro tech videos this week and reminded me of the first two smartphones, the XDA IIS and the SE P800, clunky as fook and manky resistive touchscreens. Oh Jesus Christ, those resistive displays back in the day, they were an absolute abomination. They were worse than a war crime. I mean, I would struggle to think of any form of technology that has given me as much absolute rage as those things. I'm going to stab them to actually get them to bloody do anything. Um, oh, and he continues again. Uh, what was your first smartphone? He asks. Uh, HTC Magic was my very first smartphone, one of the very first Androids. Uh, released 2009, I believe it was. Absolute classic. Three inch monster with a good bit of trackball action. Can't beat it. Uh, next up, Andrea says, can you really trust a tech reviewer who chills his Chianti? Um, oh, but it's even worse than that, Andrea, because I've never actually drunk a Chianti. I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce it, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, 100% definitely more of an apple sours or a uh, VK passion fruit kind of guy. Uh, next up, Gus H says, where can we get a copy of the Boris Book of Excuses? Um, I mean, to be fair, about 99% of that book would just say blame it on immigrants. That's a really good shout, though. I actually should write that book. Definitely, that's exactly the kind of stock and filler wankery that would make some twat a really good bit of cash, and that twat might as well be me. Uh, next up, Jaded peanut butter says bollocks to the soda stream enema a bit of mentos and diet coke right up the balloon knot is much better or so i've heard yeah pretty sure that would not be medically sanctioned at all in fact it sounds like a death straight out of the saw movies or something you have two minutes to shit out the coke bottle we inserted into your rectum otherwise the mentos tablet is released and your bowels will explode into frothy chunks uh, sticking with the subject of horrific ultraviolence, uh, Nate says an owl pecking out someone's eyeball and shitting in the socket should be a Mortal Kombat fatality. Um, yeah, agreed. Like, if Mortal Kombat introduced Harry Potter as a character, that could actually work really, really well. Either that or that elf thing, uh, Dobby, I think he's called, just strides onto screen and basically just mauls them to death with a hammer. I've only seen bits of the Harry Potter movies, admittedly, but I'd imagine that's exactly the kind of thing that Dobby would do, right? And that lad's definitely got Hammer Psycho written all over his bulbous eyed face. And next up, Utes says, waiting for the Poco F3 GT and the X3 GT reviews. Well, X3 GT earlier this week saw so, uh, Bonza. Hope you got a chance to watch that. F3 GT, I believe, is India only at the moment, so I probably won't be reviewing that anytime soon unless it happens to get a release over here. And next up, Paul Evans says, the best magazines were the ones that gave us programs in basic, which we typed in laboriously, only to have to wait a month for the bloody corrections to make the crap thing work. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I remember I must have been about sort of seven, eight years old. I had a ZX Spectrum, uh, absolute classic machine, of course. But yeah, I got a copy of your, your Sinclair. And yeah, just spending literally an entire Sunday afternoon typing out the reams of text in the back of that uh, for a game of, I can't think it was just like Hangman or Snakes and Ladders or something. And of course, yeah, did it work? Did it bollocks? Whereas these days, of course, if my kid has to wait more than about 20 seconds for a loading screen to bugger off in whatever game she's playing, that's it, she's done. She goes off to set fire to some furniture or something instead. Our next smart home says, Oi, oi, Uncle Spurt, you need to create a YouTube channel for Mr. Wangsock. Uh, yeah, wank sock spurt. That sounds all kinds of wrong. And I better make this the last one for the week as once again, massively over uh, schedule. Uh, so Baz Anime says, you need to make friends with Paul Hibbert. He covers tech and you two look alike. You're both madcap booze loving Englishmen and you've both got sock friends. Yeah, I would be a little bit concerned that if me and Paul did some sort of video collaboration thing that the viewers wouldn't be able to actually tell who was who. And also probably the studio lights reflecting off our baldy scalps would probably just blind everyone. But anyway, massive thanks to everyone who commented uh, two weeks ago, not just last week. And apologies again for the break. 
and all of that shenanigans. If we didn't get to your uh, comments, then uh, sorry, there were a lot of lovely comments, uh, so many good ones. Again, thanks to everyone who said congratulations for that, reaching that bonkers uh, subscriber number. Absolutely mental. Couldn't have done it, obviously, without every single one of you lovely folk. And now there's just about enough time before I bugger off for a bowl of Cheerios just to see uh, what is next week. Next week, let's have a look. And it looks like a couple of big launches next week. So, for instance, uh, Wednesday the 11th uh, in the afternoon, Samsung Galaxy Unpacked. So stay tuned for potentially bendy foldy phones, uh, new smartwatches, all kinds of shenanigans there. And then hot on the heels of that, Honor is launching its new Magic 3 uh, flagship smartphones on Thursday the 12th. Uh, so again, hopefully managed to get you a little bit of video action on the go for that. And yes, I do promise next week I'll be back with a good bit of text per weekly action. So yes, come and sit on my lap at noon on the Friday the 13th oh great that's uh that's got ominous written all over it and uh yeah please do uh smash your comments down below we'll try and get through as many of those as possible next week depending on how much whiskey i've had and in the meantime have yourselves a fan dabby dozy weekend thank you again for watching all this random bollocks and uh that's it bye